Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys an update on my experience with the Sony TX100V. Now again, this is Sony's flagship uh, ultra-compact point-and-shoot digital camera. It's capable of 16.2 megapixel stills due to its uh, Exmor R CMOS sensor, and it also has great video capture capability. It's uh, capable of 1080p 60 frames progressive in AVC HD uh, format at its highest uh, encoding it does 28 megabits per second so really impressed with that and uh, so far video and audio quality on this camera have been outstanding as for the image results uh, I would say pretty solid probably best in class so uh, you know no slouch here although I do find it uh, difficult to recommend this camera over the Sony HX9V which I'll get to in a moment but I want to focus right now on this three and a half inch OLED screen because Sony did opt uh, as we're going out of focus here, to go with a uh, you know a different technology. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of AMOLED. Uh, in this case, you're looking at an OLED. It doesn't quite live up to my standards, unfortunately. It is a capacitive screen, a little over a million pixels. As you can see, we can jump right into settings, and uh, you'll see it's fairly responsive. Uh, no real issues. You can either you know select tabs here, uh, or just simply scroll until you hit the next menu. And it, on the whole, I don't really have complaints about the screen. The only real issue is that uh, in terms of OLEDs, uh, this was a bit disappointing because in sunlight, you know, direct exposure outdoors, you are going to do better with uh, the screens that you'll find on its predecessors like the TX7 and the TX10 or even the HX9V. Uh, you know, it's larger, uh, more functional, you know, bigger lensed brother, we'll call it. Uh, but again, this is Sony's flagship. Uh, ultra compact zoom so I guess you know you gotta really understand what you're expecting out of a camera of this size and it really does offer great image and video quality I was even really uh, more so impressed with the audio quality again because the 4x lens is internalized you won't be picking up uh, the audio from the lens so that's definitely a good thing overall build quality is really solid really like the entire design I mean there's nothing to you know dislike on this camera it's just overall a really pocketable great photographic tool the only issue is that it's very hard to justify its premium price point due to its size especially when taking into account its lack of features compared to the HX9V even though it shares the same uh, imaging sensor and you know offers basically all the same standard image and video capabilities it clearly doesn't have that 16x lens as well as you know the form factor that I think a lot of amateurs are going to prefer to have now if you're looking for the smallest package available with the most punch of course coming at a premium price then I don't think you'll be disappointed with this camera um, you know through my experience with it so far it does take really solid stills the GPS does work it does take a little while to lock um, you know Sony is certainly not the champ uh, in the point-and-shoot digital camera market when it comes to GPS lock, but it is functional and that can always be corrected with things like an iFi uh, memory card, which I will get to later because uh, I have been toying with one of those and want to give you guys some impressions, but really what it comes down to is what you're looking for and if you really prefer having this form factor over the HX9V then I don't think you'll be disappointed because then you're probably not so focused on the lack of features when compared to the HX9V but again they are really similar in size and that's why I stress do yourself a favor see them both in store before you make a decision uh, I do endorse this camera it's again just really powerful built well and uh, you know its biggest flaw is probably that you know the OLED screen could have performed better like the traditional LCD displays in bright sunlight but otherwise really like what Sony has put out here it's a step in the right direction and uh, it's very similar actually when I think about it to uh, my comparison of the Galaxy Tab uh, honeycomb tablet to the competition you know it's a stunner in terms of looks and even in terms of capabilities but when it comes to how it stacks up with the rest of the competition uh, you know there are far more functional options out there that just simply aren't as sexy and that's really what the TX100V uh, represents you know you're getting a sexy package that attempts to do it all you know HDMI output right from the body three and a half inch OLED screen GPS you know 16.2 megapixel stills and of course that beautiful uh, and brilliant 1080p uh, 60 frames progressive resolution 
um, AVC HD, which by the way, to clear it up for all of you who have been trying to figure out, you know, a lot of Apple users, AVC HD uh, is not the format you're going to want to use really. It is the highest quality format and it plays back on PCs across the board as long as they're relatively new. I won't say even new. If, you know, you've got a computer that was decent from the last couple of years, you should be able to play uh, you know the AVC HD format files, but clearly MP4 is going to be your better option. In terms of battery life, uh, Sony's claims of 220 images uh, on a charge are pretty accurate. I've been getting around 200. So again, respectable for a really compact camera. On the video side of things, not so great. Uh, I've been seeing around 20, 20, 25 minutes of video footage. Uh, if you mix, you know, you'll get somewhere around, I would say, 100 stills and 10 to 15 minutes of video. It, it also depends what type of stills you're taking. Obviously the ones that have the extra processing involved like the low light shots or the panorama shots are going to eat more battery than a traditional uh, image that you take that doesn't involve all of that in-body uh, processing. If you're looking uh, for a camera to you know learn about photography or to bridge yourself into a hobby, this is not the right camera to look at. This is clearly a choice for its aesthetic and form factor uh, without wanting to compromise on the video or image still capability. Uh, but on the whole, really like it guys and uh, can wholeheartedly endorse it if this is what you're looking for. You won't be disappointed. It is certainly superior to the TX7 or the TX10. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.